Good morning, eighth graders. If you have not already, please make sure that you complete your weather log. So if you need to pause me right here, fabulous, come back here in a bit and then we will get going. So we are talking about the water cycle and precipitation. Um, and this is kind of where I want to start with meteorology because we need to understand what sort of process is happening in the midst of us um, seeing storms develop, weather patterns, climate, things like that. So we are working with Middle School Earth Science Standard 2-4 and basically by the end of this you should be able to describe the steps of the water cycle and explain the importance of each step. So what is truly happening at each moment? Um, 2-4 states that you're going to be able to develop a model to describe the cycling of water through Earth systems driven by energy and the force of gravity. So our energy source being the sun um, and our force of gravity like pulling it and pushing it toward and away from the Earth. Um, so yeah, make sure you have your notes in front of you and we will get going. So for whole group, this is like the only slide I'm going to talk on. So the water cycle itself is just the continuation or the continuous, sorry, movement of water or our hydrosphere throughout Earth and how it interacts with the other three spheres. So the water cycle interacts with the geosphere or our actual planet itself, the rocks. It interacts with our biosphere or all the living things amongst our planet. And then finally, it also interacts heavily with our um, atmosphere or the air around us. So for this, um, it is linked here. It doesn't do much good though, but what you're going to do is there is a link in Schoology. Please watch this. It's like less than five minutes um, and it explains some of the smaller portions of the water cycle. And once you feel like you have a good understanding of it, then come back to the video to this video. So we are moving on with our CHAMPS expectations. If you're working on this independently, please remember that we need to keep our voice levels down and we need to complete our work. After that, then we can chat. Awesome. So we talked about in the video the steps of our water cycle is condensation or evaporation, condensation and precipitation. We're going to start with precipitation because this is the one that I feel gets the most misunderstood as it has been made very, very clear to me in conversations in the classroom. A lot of people think that precipitation is just water and or is just rain and it's not. Precipitation overall is water falling from the clouds onto Earth's surface, but depending on temperatures and conditions and things like that, our water falling can, yes, come as rain, but it can also come down as freezing rain uh, or super cold rain that as soon as it hits our surface turns into ice. Um, snow, which we have or have not experienced a lot of this year. Um, hail, sleet, and then something really fun called grapple that has to have like the perfect weather conditions in order to form. Um, so let's talk about each of these different types of precipitation. So rain. Now these are videos linked in here, but again, they're not going to play on here for whatever reason, um, but they are all linked in Schoology. <clears throat> so rain itself is when water vapor condenses and due to gravity, um, called from the clouds to the surface of the earth. This is one of the few ways that it falls as liquid um, rather than a solid. Okay, so that um, this little video just kind of explains a little bit more about how we get rain versus other precipitation types. Um, freezing rain. This is when liquid rain passes through a mass of freezing air um, and then freezes upon contact with roads or other surfaces of the earth. So we talked about this a little bit with winter storms. So a um, little bit of a recap, but again, watch these videos, 
um, on your own time. You don't have to do them right now, but I feel like they explain them a little bit better than I can because they're, they're the people who knows what's up. Um, sleet. Sleet is weird. <laughs> sleet is snow that falls from the clouds, so it starts out as a solid um, and then moves through a warmer air mass um, and then partially melts. So it's the opposite of freezing rain. Um, and then snow obviously is solid water falling from the clouds to Earth's surface and does not melt once it gets down here. Now, yes, it takes a second, but it lands as a solid and then starts to melt um, depending on the temperature of the actual surface itself. So um, those. Grapple. Grapple is so much fun. Um, grapple is soft hail or snow pellets that are super cold water droplets that collect and freeze on falling snowflakes. So um, I'll have to find my picture of it. We actually got grapple um, back in 2023, 2022, and maybe even the year before that. But yet, as I'm recording this, it's 2024, and I have yet to experience any grapple this winter. So, um, but essentially, it's just really fuzzy snowflakes. Kind of fun in that way. Again, watch this video. They can explain it so much better than I can, but that is just like the basics of it. This um, guy does a really great job of explaining um, like what the different precipitation types mean, where they form, and what sort of an impact it can have on us humans. Um, that 3D um, virtual model that he has in front of him actually shows um, our interactions with these different precipitation types. So take the time to watch him. Um, again, it's from the Weather Channel, so they are the experts. They do really know a lot more than I can try to explain to you. <clears throat> okay, so we have water that has fallen from the sky and it has made its way to our surface. Okay, we're back to the water cycle finally. Um, so as that water makes its way to the surface, water is very like it wants to interact with itself it wants to become larger and larger and larger so essentially what happens is as the rain falls or as the precipitation falls rain is just a really good example of this because everything else would need to melt to start this process of runoff but it wants to gather we it gathers in um puddles it gathers in storm drains it gathers on little like streams or creeks and then eventually all of that leads to a larger body so if you think of if it were to rain outside of school right now everything is going to go toward a storm drain um the storm drain will eventually lead into some sort of a holding pool to where it then can evaporate off if we think of it in a more natural sense if you're watching it in say um the woods rain comes down it starts these little streams and then they maybe get a little bit larger leads into these creeks um to then maybe a river that river then leads to a lake that lake eventually leads to an ocean and then it starts the process again so runoff is essentially just water wanting to gather and flow towards a larger body of it um so these are just some examples of how runoff can happen. Um, in your choose activities, um, there is a really great explanation of all of this. Evaporation. So once water kind of settles, um, evaporation occurs. This is where we move from a liquid molecule to a gaseous molecule. So water vapor, um, water changing from that, so that liquid water to vaporous water or think of like steam okay those sorts of things and this is all thanks to the sun the sun's energy shining down on our surface and heating it all up to where it then can evaporate once water evaporates again it goes up into our atmosphere and 
just like liquid water, it wants to come together. It wants to become a larger amount. So what happens is that liquid water, or sorry, that water vapor starts to cling to dust and then they start to cling to each other to where eventually this vapor or gas turns more liquidy. Um, and typically we, we see these as clouds. You can actually see them. Um, and because as soon as they start coming together more and more and more and more, if the cloud can't hold any more of that water vapor, it starts to precipitate. Um, this also happens if you take a hot shower and then the steam um, covers up your mirror or if you have a window in your bathroom covers that up and then if you were to try to draw a smiley face don't do it if your mother is or your grown-up is like don't draw in my mirrors but if you were to do that then you get that little drip now and then that is because that water vapor had condensed on top of your mirror and it gathered to where then it wants to drip down into liquid water once again Final step, which is new-ish, um, would be transpiration. So this is where you have water that has gathered, but not in a place you would normally think. Um, the other things on this planet that needs water are plants. So plants gather this water. Um, and once it starts getting warmer outside, um, the plant only needs to hold so much, but sometimes the roots take in a little bit more to where what happens is the stomas of the plants start to open up and releases excess water vapor because it doesn't want to be too heavy, but it wants to keep just the right amount of water for the hotter parts of the day. Um, so transpiration is water vapor being released from plants. You can see this across like our, um, rainforest if you've ever seen pictures of that where there's just this haze right above all of the trees that's transpiration in action so um yeah plants are phenomenal phenomenal things um so that is the water cycle kind of summed up so there is a diagram you need to complete, which you should be able to do so just with this basic information. Your note should basically be done at this point in time. Um, and then you can start working toward your choose to activity. So awesome. If you need anything from your teachers, please just ask us. Um, and yeah, that's all I got. Awesome. Thank you, eighth graders.